Hi, this is Matt from Centurial, and I'm gonna show you how to program with your Kronos by system. So the first operation I wanna talk about is a facing operation. Option number one is to draw a sketch, like the one you see here. It allows me to run a single pass over both components. And there's a good reason to do this. If you use a very large diameter fly cutter or shell mill, it's unlikely that you're gonna be able to prevent the tool from contacting neighboring parts, especially when you consider the lead in and lead out. First, we'll have to define the sketch, which I did that previously. And then under this operation, which is specifically a trace operation, under geometry, I select the lines that I want the cutter to follow. Now, another option is to use this one right here. And in order to prevent the tool from contacting neighboring parts, I just controlled the amount of distance that the tool exited the material or extended past the material. And I'll show you how I did that. So you're gonna start with a smaller diameter tool to begin with. And then under your passes tab, there's extension settings here and stock offsets. I've set all of those to zero and that ensures that the cutter stays on the material as much as possible. Okay, so now that you have your facing operation programmed, it's time to pattern it. I'm gonna show you two options here. The first option is the mirror option, and you do need to create a plane in order to use this option. So you can see the blue plane here is selected, and I created that before going into the programming of this part. In order to use the mirror pattern, click the drop down, go down to mirror, and then under the mirror plane, choose your plane. There's a couple of options in order to tell the software how you want to process the parts. Use your best judgment. I'm gonna go with preserve order and click okay. You've created your mirror pattern and now you've got to do it for all the other stations that you're gonna run. Well, this is easy enough. You can click on any pattern you create, right click and go down to add to new pattern. This way you can put patterns inside of patterns. So let's take a look at a linear pattern. This one's a very easy one to work with. Under the drop down menu, select linear pattern. I'm gonna go with spacing because I know the spacing I'm working with, but you could also go with extent. I've set every single rail here two inches apart. And I know that I have six rails. So six times two inches apart. And we're gonna preserve order. That's the one that I prefer and click okay. We have our mirror pattern and then our linear pattern giving us 12 operations. Everything that we just did was just the facing operation. You could easily pattern all your operations all at once simply by selecting them all, right click and add to a new pattern. This would allow you to send everything you want all at once. So we're gonna click on a linear pattern, click on spacing and for the direction, I'm just gonna click on an edge we're going to do six every two inches. And there you have it. And just like before, if we want to mirror this, we can do patterns inside of patterns. So we right click on the pattern we just made and we do add another pattern. And we change it from linear to mirror. For the mirror plane, we click on the plane we created earlier, keep the original, Order by tool is acceptable, but I'm gonna go with preserve order just for my personal preferences and click okay. And there you go. We just programmed 12 components. So everything that I just showed you is a really good example of how to do your first operation. And I have that labeled here in the tree. This is a simple way to get the job done quickly, but the precision is a little bit lacking. If you wanted to do a very high precision pattern, you wouldn't want to use these techniques. These techniques are ignorant of the position of the part. So if the part's slightly off in any one direction, the pattern's not gonna know it. And that's really important when you're doing the second operation and you want chamfers or the walls of the part to line up. Well, there is a way to get this done. Let me show you. We're gonna right click and edit on the first op you would be using this technique specifically for the second op, but I'm gonna use the first op here just to demonstrate it. On the right here, we have post process, and towards the bottom, you can see we have machine work coordinate offsets. So this way, you can tell the post processor to create a work coordinate system for every single station. I'm gonna use the Haas controller as an example, and Haas has additional work coordinate offsets. 
starting at G110 and going to G129. So I tell it to start its first work offset at G110. I want 12 instances and I want it to increment one at a time. When we post this out, we can also tell it, just like our previous patterns, how we want to order our tools and operations. When you post this out, you're going to get everything that we've created here. And all this is going to come with a different work coordinate offset for every single station. This is beautiful because it simplifies how we control precision. If each station is a little bit off, we can just simply probe our part and set our work coordinate system specifically to each part. And the programming is going to call up that work coordinate offset to get everything exactly right. Another quick tip I wanted to cover before we move on to the soft jaws is how to control the entry and exit position of some of your programs. And you can see here that the outside contour of both the chamfer and the profile of this part are controlled by this point right here that I manually sketched. You go to your operation, and on the very last tab, under linking, you're going to see positions and specifically an entry position is the one I'm using here. There are other choices including an exit position and pre-drilling but this one is the one that I'm currently using and if you select just the one it uses it as both in this case as the entry and the exit. On screen here you can see that there are some automatic points that you can select such as corners and intersections of various features. You don't always have to sketch manually or create a manual point, but in this example, I chose to. So let's take a look at our soft jaws. Okay, so here you can see our soft jaw setup. I'm gonna roll back the design history a little bit. We'll start with the most important thing, which is to control the engagement between the jaw and the part. The way that we do this is by offsetting or backing up the jaw to the open position. Now you get about 40 thousandths of adjustment in the jaw. You don't want to use all of that because you want a little bit of room to go forwards and backwards. So the first step that we want to do is we want to set the jaw correctly into position. So once your bases are in place, you want to align based off of the clamping hole, which is this one right here and this one right here. So what we'll do is we'll go to modify, align, We'll click on the object we want to move, which is going to be this one, and the object we want to stay, which is going to be this one. And there we go. Click OK. Right click. Move or copy. Click on this body right here, and we're going to move it up so that way we can see the bottom of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this face flush with this face right here. Another modify, align. First we click the one we want to move and the one we want to stay. And there we go. So let's take a look at the problem we have here. If we did that, there would be no available motion. It can't close at all. It could open, but it couldn't close. Also, this is the fully closed position. This is the most closed the jaw could ever be. Once it's completely centered, there's no additional movement. So how do we control this? Well, the easiest thing to do is to use the move copy command again. Click on the bodies or components option. And we want to click on this arrow right here because this is in the direction we want it to move. And positive is with the arrow and negative is against the arrow. So we're going to go negative 25 thousandths. And you can see that's a very good position. It's not fully open but it also gives us plenty of room to close the jaw. At this point, it becomes standard issue soft jaw best practices. You can see here I've already made the pocket. The really cool thing about this system is that the soft jaws don't need to be bottomed out against anything. Like a normal vise, you have to close it up against something in order to hold everything in place while you machine it. That's not the case with these. These self-lock. And this is the only really critical thing you need to add. This top jaw right here swivels freely. So when you're closing the jaw and tightening it down, it can twist or rotate out of position. But by providing this bump stop flush along this edge, you create a positive engagement that prevents the jaw from free spinning. 
that's fantastic news for us because we can put these jaws exactly where they need to be when the pallet system is being utilized. We can cut our pocket and as soon as we're done cutting our pocket, we are immediately ready to use the system. From this point on, everything that I've shown you earlier on how to pattern programs is exactly the same. So making these soft jaws would be treated just like every part previously shown. You would create your programs, you would pattern or mirror your programs, and then you would run it all at once. That's it for this episode. If you have specific questions on how I did any of this, if you want more detail or further explanation or a step-by-step -step tutorial, just ask so in the comment section. I read that and answer to just about every single comment. You can get a hold of us directly through our website, through email, or you can call us on the phone number. Until next time, thanks for watching.